Hello, my name is Bill Kinney and this is a series of instructional videos that I've titled Foundations of Arithmetic, Algebra, and Graphing with a focus on real-life interpretation and application. Again, I'm Bill Kinney, a professor of math mathematics at Bethel University. In the this is the fourth video of that series. In the, uh, the first three videos, um, there was a dis we discussed um, addition and subtraction as well as different number systems, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, and the integers, with a focus on real-life interpretation and application, although I didn't have that subtitle right there in that, the, the first three videos. I've added it now. Um, and our application is focused on um, uh, money, cash flow in particular, being the your income minus your expenses, and also um, motion, throwing a ball up in the air and letting it fall down to the ground or into a hole. This video is titled Multiplication of Integers, Meaning and Application, Part 1. And so we're going to focus on um, mostly some applications, some real life situations where multiplication is needed and gives you and give you modes of thinking for for why multiplication is necessary in this, these problems um, and how to how to think about it algebraically as well so that we can ultimately get good at doing algebra and ultimately also do some graphing. Um, the focus is not going to be on uh, algorithms you may remember or not remember from your past for how to multiply things, although I might tell you some tricks of the trade. Uh, I probably will for um, doing some kinds of multiplications and estimations in your head. It's mostly, again, going to be focused on real-life situations, interpretations and applications, meaning and application, if you will. So, what's the first problem in this video? We will start with the problem here. You are at a banquet and have three choices for the main course, chicken, beef, and vegetarian, and two choices for the dessert, cake or pie. Now, I guess I suppose, to, I suppose I should have said or here instead of and for the first thing. thing. Uh, how many meals can you choose from? Typical kind of problem you might encounter with some pretty small numbers here. I, I chose small numbers on purpose. Um, you should realize when you first think about a problem like this that there are some implicit assumptions that um, you have to realize are there. And one of them is, in fact, exemplified by the fact that I did change this and to or. You, with your main course, you're going to choose chicken, beef, or vegetarian, one of those three, and not more than one. And with your dessert, you're going to choose one of these two, cake or pie, one or the other, but not both. Another implicit assumption is you are going to have a main course and you are going to have a dessert. You're not going to have just a main course and skip the dessert. You're not going to have just the dessert and skip the main course. Those are some implicit, unstated assumptions in this problem that uh, you should get in the habit of realizing are often there in math problems. Um, some of you may see the answer right away, um, and that's, that's great. If you don't see the answer right away, how would you go about thinking about it? Well, there are a couple different nice ways to think about it. One way is to draw something called the tree diagram. Um, and imagine these two lines that I've drawn as being branches in this tree diagram. The first branch, this is representing choosing your main course. Actually, I, I need three branches then. Choose your main course. You can either choose chicken, which I'll abbreviate CH. I do notice that I've got uh, two words here that start with a C, so I better do a CH there. Beef, I'll abbreviate as B. Vegetarian, I'll abbreviate as V. So you've got three choices for the main course. Then you've got two choices for the dessert. Now, you, you, what you do want to do is you want to imagine that you've made your first choice. You've either cho chosen chicken, beef, or vegetarian. And then you make your choice for the dessert. You've got two choices, cake or pie. You want to draw two branches from each of the main course, course choices 
and write your choice of cake or pie in each situation like this. Ultimately, what this shows is you've got six paths through the tree corresponding to the six different overall meals you can choose from. And that's the answer, six, two times three. Three main courses times, this is a little confusing here, two choices for your dessert. Um, the two is again indicating that for each one of these first branches you've got two choices here, ultimately resulting in six paths through the tree, which is the same as the total number of branches here, one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's probably better to think of this six, which is the answer, as representing the six different paths through the tree, representing your six overall meal, meal choices. So it's a multiplication. Three times two is six, and that's your final answer for the total number of meals. And you should put units, six meals. Another way to visualize this and realize it's a multiplication is to imagine it um, with a chart. Maybe you have your main course here, which I'll just abbreviate main, and your dessert over here, which I'll abbreviate dessert. Well, I'll write as dessert. And you've got, again, three choices for the main course and two choices for the dessert. And if you separate these off like this, you see that you've got six boxes in here representing the six different meal combinations. You wouldn't have to do this to see the answer, but you, you could if, it, if you liked. You could say, okay, this box represents choosing chicken and then cake, beef, then cake, vegetarian, then cake, these are these slashes are just meant to they're not meant to be a division or anything these are not numbers uh, they're just meant to indicate the main course then the dessert chicken then pie beef then pie or vegetarian then pie altogether giving you uh, again two times three six choices drawing that kind of diagram um, reminds me that of area problems and here's a quick area problem. We'll do this one quicker. Uh, your bedroom measures 12 feet long by 10 feet wide. What is its area? That's our first question. Your bed is 6 feet long and 5 feet wide. And the second question is how much floor area, how much floor area is left in your room after you put in the bed? Do you put the bed in it? Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Um, hopefully you see you want to use multiplication here as well, and these numbers are simple enough that you ho hopefully can do them in your head. Um, but you could make a drawing if you're unclear about it, if you want to know why you use multiplication. You could imagine this as being your room. It's 12 feet long, abbreviate feet FT, and 10 feet wide. I didn't necessarily draw this to a perfect scale. That's okay. Um, what's the area? You maybe have seen diagrams like this, realizing you need to multiply 12 times 10, and that is the answer. You want to include the units here, 12 feet times 10 feet. Hopefully you remember that multiplying by 10 is easy. You just add a zero to the other number to get 120. It's important to include the units. And the convention here is that you, in a sense, you multiply the units, feet times feet, to get, well, you could call it feet times feet, but you could also call that feet squared. You might recall that when you put a power there, that means multiply the thing by itself. It's not that you're literally multiplying the feet, okay? It, the feet is not a number, it's a unit. But this is the conventional way to write it, and you could also say that is 120 square feet. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from uh, adding things to this diagram, some boxes that are supposed to represent one foot by one foot boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 
in that direction and 10 in this direction. Each of these boxes, again, is one foot by one foot, in other words, one square foot, and ultimately you would have 120 of them. Of course, you put your bed in there. It's six feet long and five feet wide. Maybe you put it right uh, here, something like this. Um, hopefully you realize you'd have to multiply six times five to get the area of the bed to be 30 square feet. And then the final answer to the second question would be a subtraction, 120 square feet minus 30 square feet is 90 square feet. Notice that, as I mentioned in the first three videos, that with add addition and subtraction, the, the units all need to match up. And that's the end of this video.